In an earlier video, I demonstrated how to make icicles to create a more realistic winter scene. In this video, I'm going to be adding snow to the roofs of a couple of structures. And I'm going to show you how I do that using some Woodland Scenics product called Soft Flake Snow and Scenic Cement. And we're starting right now. I have a total of four structures where I'm going to be applying the soft flake snow. The cabin, the barn, and the water coaling tower, the coaling tower, and the little pump house down below. So the first step is to mist them lightly with scenic cement. Now I bought this rig, the scenic cement, directly from Woodland Scenics, and I also bought from them a spritz bottle that I can use to wet down plaster before I want to apply more plaster on top of it. And that little same little water spritzer fits on the scenic cement bottle. So it just screws right on. So there's multiple positions on here. There's a spray position, a squirt position that's just as a string. There's off positions. And I'm going to be using the one to spritz the water in a mist. Now we'll see how well that works. It doesn't always work just perfectly. You'll also notice that I've used paper shop towels to cover areas that I don't want to get scenic cement on. Soft flake snow falls in those areas. That's no big deal because snow on top of snow is no problem. But I don't want to get the scenic cement just all over everywhere. So I've kind of used the shop towels to mask off the train and the tracks and other things that I don't want to get the scenic cement on. The scenic cement is a little bit watery, so when I put it on I have to be careful not to put on too much. And I'm going to start right now. Now that we have it misted, the next step is going to be putting down the soft flake snow. The soft flake snow, you've got two options here. You could use a sprinkler or you can use the spoon side where you just spoon it out. I'm going to use the sprinkling side and try to sprinkle it on and try to get it a little bit evenly. It's not going to be perfectly even, but the fact is, as we said before, nothing in nature is perfectly even. So a little bit of clumps here and there that won't hurt. And again, the soft flake snow that falls down into the shop towels, I can reuse that by picking it back up and dumping it out. And if it's not clumpy, it just works real well to just reuse it again and put it on something else. There. I think we're pretty well covered, as good as we need to be at least for the first coating. Now one of the things you can do is you can do multiple coatings of this if you, if you decide you want to do that. I'm probably going to do just the one coating and we'll let it go at that. Now once you've got the snow on, you've got another step to do with the scenic cement. And that is you just want to mist over it again so it holds things down. There. Now we've got it misted twice. Once before you do it so that it'll hold the material and then after you do it so that it'll lock the material in place. And I'm going to call that good enough for now. We'll come back later and see if we need to do any touch-ups. With the soft flake snow in place and hopefully locked in place with that second layer of scenic cement, I'm now going to let everything dry thoroughly. After it's dried thoroughly, I'll pick up the paper shop towels and I'll salvage as much of the soft flake snow as I can that's fallen off the rooftops as I was doing this. And then I'm going to do a little operating session and we're going to run the trains. And that's the best part of every video, playing with trains. So hang on, we're going to go a few hours, let everything dry, and then we're going to do the cleanup, and then we're going to run the trains.
Well, we've got the snow on the roof of the cabin, which is also the farmhouse, the barn, the silo, the coaling tower, and the pump house. And I think they turned out pretty well. Uh, snow is not perfectly even, but that's just the way it works in nature. Nature's not perfectly even. We've got the Polar Express passenger train running in the background, and we also have the Polar Express trolley running, which you'll possibly see shortly if it comes back to this end of the trolley line. The farmstead looks pretty good right now with some snow piled around the edges of it and on the roofs. There goes the trolley. And we're going to just continue on and, and operate the trains for a while. For an O-gauge layout, I've got a relatively small space in which to work in. One of the challenges that comes with that is finding a way to reverse the trains. I need to have some kind of a reversing loop or a reversing arrangement that allows me to start the train in one direction and then turn it around and take it in another direction. And the way I can do that is using the crossover bridge as a reversing loop. So let's go ahead and I'll run the trains and we'll see how I do that. A key part of that is the lift bridge that I built myself. It's right here in the center of the picture and I'm going to fold that up and then bring a train up to the upper level and then use that crossover bridge as a way to reverse it. I've got the bridge raised and I've got the switches in the right position so we're going to start off and see if we can get the Polar Express passenger train up to the upper level. So I need to have a good head of steam up getting up the grade. Once I'm up to the top, I need to slow down pretty quickly so that I can make that first curve without any problems. I'm just going to pull it far enough forward so that I can hit the bridge on the other side. So I'm going to have to lower the bridge and throw a few switches and then we'll be in a position to do the crossover. It's coming across and the tricky part will be when it makes the connection on this end of the bridge and gets onto the main line of the track. There we go. I'm going to let it go a little bit farther along and then I'll slow it down and I'll move the elf work train out of the way. The elf work train's not really very long even though I have the extra four car pack on it. So I can clear that switch and just park it like right here and I'm in good shape. Now we need to finish the run with the Polar Express passenger train and get that moving along and go all the way around. Now, if I didn't throw that switch on the opposite end of the bridge where the crossover connects with the elevated track, track number three, it would have automatically switched when the locomotive got there. And that switch on the far side of the track behind the barn will allow it to get back onto track number two and once it's all the way onto track number two, then I'm going to pause and I'll make some adjustments with the bridge and the switches as we'll have more trains running at the same time. All right, we're all the way through the switch. Now I'm going to pause that one and I'm going to lower the bridge and I'm going to uh, reset the switches 
Now again, they would automatically throw when the train approached them if I hadn't done that. But I just kind of like to do it in case there's a, any little glitch and it doesn't throw by itself. As you can see now, we have reverse direction on the Polar Express passenger train. And if you notice the switches right in front of it there, that allows me to take the train from track one and move to track two and vice versa. So that allows me to reverse both the trains uh, on the Polar Express passenger train and the Polar Express freight train on the lower level. So here we go. We're going to let her run again. And while we're doing that, we're also going to get the Elf work train running so that we can have both of them running at the same time. Good little bell, very weak whistle on that elf work train. And here we go with the Polar Express passenger train. We now have the passenger train running on the opposite direction on track number two. Freight train is connected. Let's get it going. It's coming along on track number one at the lower level. That's the outer loop. It's going past the hot cocoa can on loading platform. I've got a good selection of cars on that right now. I've got some more cars on the way and uh, I'll be doing an unboxing on those when they come in. So you want to be sure you don't miss that. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Please also click the like. That helps me with the, with the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate all the people who subscribed and all the people who click the likes and comment. The tunnel muffles the whistle a little bit on that freight train. It's coming out past the North Pole on the other side. So on my layout, I've got a definite north, which is where the North Pole, Christmas tree are. The tunnel is also on the north end. And then on the south end, I've got the village. Now one of the next projects that I've got planned is to work on icicles and snow on the roofs for the buildings in the, in the village. And that's going to be a little bit time consuming. You can't do all the steps at once. You've got to take time in between in order to let things cure. And that's going to that's be a lot of fun though. It'll just make it look way more realistic. I don't think there's anybody involved in the hobby of model railroading that didn't wish they had more space for their layout. I know I do on a regular basis. There's lots of things I could do to expand and make the layout more interesting if I just had about 10 more feet. But I don't, so I do the best with what I have. I hope you enjoyed this operating session. I hope you enjoyed the putting snow on the roofs part of this video. And if you enjoyed that, please subscribe, click the like button down below, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching.